Thanks, Liv. Well done. And so good. I, like, I love hearing about, you know, all the people in our church, our family. Um, you can keep that going, guys. Yeah, that's uh, beautiful. Uh, just Don't hearing about, down. you know, like where our people are at and what they're going through and just standing in prayer with our church family. There's nothing more powerful than that. And I, I love what Liv said. She said that uh, there's no distance in prayer. And, uh, and so I believe that. And, uh, and so I think it's just great to come together as a church family and to you know, intercede together and, and intercede together as a unit for others. Um, yeah. And that's, that's kind of what we do when it comes to giving. And so real quick, I just wanted to share on giving um, that we, we're giving for other people's sake. We're giving uh, so that we can reach people, we can bless people, we can um, teach people the goodness of God and, and the grace of God and, and the good news. Um, and, you know, when I was in, in Hillsong College, uh, you know, developing as a leader, as a young leader and, and uh, getting into the ministry mix, um, this phrase was always on our, on our radar and always on the forefront of our mind was um, uh, use what's in your hand to fulfill what's in your heart. Um, and wow. I just love that because sometimes Great. we have such big desires and such big dreams that we kind of stress out about like, oh, like how could I accomplish this? Or, you know, like I would love to change this. You know, how could I, how could I do that? Like, oh, it's so big. I, I can't even start anywhere. But we actually can use what's in our hand and God has given us wow. uh, resource. He's given so us good. supply that we can actually sow into his kingdom that will reap harvest for not just for us, but for people all over that need it. Um, and just like in the word in Ephesians 3, um, in the message says, God can do anything, you know, far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. And so he, our God is a capable God. He, he's yeah, he an is. amazing God. He blows us away. Um, and, you know, sometimes all it takes is using the little seed that's in our hand. And so um, that, that's what encourages me to give. And so I just wanted to encourage you guys to partake in giving tonight. Um, that we are going to use the, the small amount. It, it could be a, a $2 offering. It could be a five. It could be anything that's extra than your regular ties that you want to sow and stand uh, on God's promise, knowing that he is capable of doing so much more than we could ever yeah. dream. And w all the things that we would love to see change in our world, see change in our society, and, uh, you know, want to see in our own lives, we actually can tap into through our generosity and through our giving. That's and so good. just want to invite you to do so, uh, as you see on your screen below, um, all the ways to give, ways to partake in being generous with us, partnering with us as a church family, uh, which is so cool. And so as you do that, so I'm cool. just going to pray. Are you cool with that? I'm if I just great. pray and bless I'm everyone. Great. God, thank it. you so much for who you are and just your nature, Lord, that you, you cannot lie. You can do no wrong. And so anything that is in the Bible is your word, and you do not go against your word. And so we trust you, Lord. We stand on your word. We stand on your promise, knowing that you will provide for us. You will fulfill the dreams in our hearts. Yes, Lord. Um, you take every seed, and there is always harvest. Uh, and so we believe that. We receive that. And we bless everyone that's giving tonight. Uh, that you would just pour down in their lives where they need it, uh, and so much more. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Wow. Awesome. So good. That's so good. <laughs> I, I gotta it. say the the just the whole concept of using what's in your hand to fulfill what's in your heart is um, it really is a lifelong um, mantra that everybody should have. Mm. Like every miracle starts with what you already have. Yeah. Every breakthrough starts with what you already have. Yeah. Every, every need starts with a seed. Yeah. And so um, I think it's, it's so important to, to not just uh, limit that to money. Here, we're, it's so important that we do understand that when we plant financial seeds, we can serve others, we can minister to others, and God does give back to us, right? Good yeah. measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. But it's a principle that works in every area of life, yeah. right? 100%. Everything is a field. Everything in this world is a field, and, and there's always a seed to plant in the field. Our heart is the field. Mm. The Bible talks about how the kingdom of God is in us, and our soul, our soul or our heart is the soil where the seeds of God's word grow inside of us and produce increase. And so we always have something we can do with what we have in our hand seed of god's word yeah. the seed of our finances the seed of our kindness the seed of our handshake the seed of our laying on of hands well, it just stuck with me when you said that you know yeah. the take what's in your hand 
and use what's in your hand to fulfill what's in your heart. And uh, I got a shout out to all of our volunteers yeah. and our staff who called all 3,000 people, 3,000 families, uh, uh, another round of 3,000 calls. Like we, uh, This church has ministered more, the servants and the leaders and the, and the staff and the volunteers of this church have ministered more in the last year than maybe the last five years combined yeah. because in, uh, I think um, necessity is the mother of invention, right? Mm -hmm. So something becomes necessary, it, it opens the door to new inventions, new ways, new ways of doing things like the song they were doing, God, you're doing a new thing. Yeah. And um, so I'm excited about, uh, I'm, I'm thankful for everybody being here and connecting. Yeah. And I'm thankful for uh, being able to talk about some stuff today. Yeah. And I was going to say the reason why I really loved uh, this scripture tonight for just, not just for giving, but like in general is, you know, uh, we, we've been talking about leadership. We've been talking about, um, you know, being a standout, you know, uh, like Peter in the Bible, the disciples, like where they they committed themselves to following Jesus and even though you know Peter especially because we've been focusing on him even though you know he's been he's a, he was a rough uh, a rough he had a rough history rough yeah. past god was able to do amazing things through him and i think if 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 jesus were to say you know you're you're going to do all of these things like he would be like that's impossible like right. you know and that's that's why this scripture is so cool because the things we can't even we can't even fathom the things that God has for us and wants to do through us yeah. and uh, so and, good. and so how do we do that by using what's in our hand by yeah, by it. knowing what by using what we know using what we've been given and I think you know th these things that we've been uh, really drilling on um, and studying in, in God's word about you know what Jesus said to Peter uh, on his leadership uh, path. Like we, we have access to that and we can use that we and sure we can, can apply those things to our lives. So we can use these things and God is going to fulfill the dreams and, and the desires and the passions that we have to make a difference in this world. So great. So absolutely. Without further ado, I think <laughs> we dive in to the next, dive in. the next thing, the next point. Yeah. You know, I really want to, I kind of want to uh, build up to this next thing cool. a little by going back yeah. and uh, double clicking on something we talked about earlier in the month or uh, back in February, I think. And when Jesus does this miracle of this great catch of fish, okay, so in Luke chapter 5, to set it up, because we're going to get to the next one, but to set this up, I want you guys to look in your Bibles in Luke chapter 5. You have your Bible with, me, with you. I got mine with me. Uh, and I want to just mention that when Jesus got in Peter's boat, he preached to everybody. But then he said to Peter in verse 4, now launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. So we talked about how launching into the deep is God's great adventure for our lives. He yeah. wants us to go deep. He doesn't want us to experience just a shallow relationship with him, but a deep one, full of, one, full of wonder and yeah. full of amazing and astonishing things that God wants to do in people's lives. I just want to stop for a second and really tell everybody, God wants to do amazing and astonishing things in your life. He wants to do amazing and astonishing things in your life. In fact, there are many places in, in the Gospels where it says the people were astonished, the people were amazed. These are words that we've sort of lost, uh, lost the, the, the essence of these words because mm. we, we're, we throw out amazing so easily. Yeah, I'm guilty not, of that. Not, right? We, I, do, I, do, I am too. Not everything is amazing, uh, right? Not everything is amazing. But, but when something really is, and there's no other words but astonishing and amazing, like when, when you have other words than amazing that you could describe something with, then it's probably not amazing, right? <laughs> but when, it, has to be, it has to be something special yeah. to, be, to only be able to describe, be described as amazing and astonishing. Can you just believe, can you believe with me, can I believe with you today that God's going to start doing amazing and astonishing things in your life that, that will cause you to be able to only give the glory to him. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know something is of God when no one else can get the glory except him. Yeah. And you know something is biblical when it, when, when it doesn't point to something we can do, but it points to what Jesus has done. Whenever, whenever the scripture is interpreted as, uh, as, as boiling down to what Jesus did for us, 
then that's what glorifies God. It glorifies God when the focus is on what Jesus did rather than on what we do. Mm. And uh, I want you to get ready for what Jesus is going to do in your life. He's going to do amazing and astonishing things. So, so, so Jesus says to Peter, launch out into the deep and let down your net for a catch. And, and then Simon answered, even though Jesus had changed his name, but Simon answered and said, Master, which is a good thing to say. He starts <laughs> out this sentence really good. Uh, then he says, we have toiled all night. We've labored all night. And we caught nothing. Now, here's where Peter's brilliance is revealed. And, you know, I think sometimes we just think of Peter sometimes as a bumbling, stumbling, you know, just a, a, a gaffe going somewhere to happen, a, a, a problem going somewhere to happen. But he was brilliant. And here's what shows his brilliance. He says, Jesus tells him to do something that it doesn't make any logical sense to yeah. his mind. Launch into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And he responds, Master... We've worked all night and caught nothing. Like we got zero zip nada. We've done, we've caught nothing. We've been here all night and now, but then look at what he says. Nevertheless, mm. at your word, yeah. I will let down the net. Like this guy, that takes some, you know, some, some, some guts and some, some raw, uh, just, just nerve to be able to say, you know what, we fish, uh, this is my lifestyle. This is how I've made my living. This has yeah. been my business. And you're telling me to do something that's completely contrary to anything I've ever not known or, or thought before. But you know what? At your word, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And I think when we get a hold of what this means, that, that no, matter what is, no matter how we have been conditioned mm. or, or what we're used to, we have to realize that God's word is so much more powerful and we should be more, more willing to do what his word says, act on God's word, than we are willing to act on our preconceived, awesome. trained ways of awesome. living and doing things the old way. God's doing something new. Jesus was doing something new in Peter's life, and he said, we're going for a catch, and Peter, and Peter was on board with that. Peter was like, you know what? This goes against everything, but at your word, at your word, at your word, at your word, because of your word, because you said so, you know, you can feel sick all day long, but because he said so, because Olivia prayed so, she Come said, on. God's going to instantly heal some of you. Come on. Like, because God said so, yes. we're going to go and act on it. Because God said it's going to be all right, we're going to be happy today. Because God said everything's going to be all right, we're going to rejoice today. Because God said we're going to the other side, we're going to rest and be at peace when the storm hits us. Come because on. God said yes. so, and we'll reap. Because God said give and it'll be given. Because God said speak to the mountain. I don't even care if it doesn't move. He told me to speak to it to be removed so i'm going to do what his word said and i'm going to tell this mountain to move and the rest is up to the mountain and up to god yeah wow at his word brilliant peter said that's exactly it man peter's brilliant mm. in defying all of his education yes all of his man's training all of his advanced knowledge of fishing and he said you know what i don't care what i've learned about money God said to give, I'm going to give. I don't care what I learned about hurt and offense. God said to forgive, I'm going to forgive. I don't care what I learned about how broken my body is. God said, I'm healed by his stripes. And I'm bowing my knee to his word. Yeah. At your word, I'll let down the net. And notice, so moving on to set this up. <laughs> so when they had done this, they caught such a great number of fish that their net began to break so they signal to their partners, it says, and they had to come and fill both boats up, yeah. right? Crazy. And it's just such a marvelous miracle, an amazing, astonishing miracle that if you let Jesus in your boat and you let him be the captain, you know, <laughs> Captain Peter had to move over and become the co-captain, right? Captain Peter had to become the assistant. Captain, Captain Peter... Thought he was the skipper, but he needed to become Gilligan. Mm. You know, for some of you. Nice. You know? <laughs> so I really want to encourage you guys that Peter was the master of his boat, but he surrendered his boat to Jesus. Yeah. Peter was the master of fishing, but he surrendered his knowledge to Jesus. 
Peter was a master of the sea, but he surrendered to the maker of the sea. Awesome. And this just thrills me. It just gives me the chills thinking <laughs> about how, how lovely Jesus is to do these kinds of miracles and how, what a man Peter is. That, mm. that you know, God wants us to be men like that. You know, at his word, we're going to just do it. We're not going to fight it. We're not going to argue with it. And then I want you guys to see what happens. So Peter, we know this. You guys know the story. Peter falls down and worships Jesus. He's like, depart from me. I'm a sinful man. Get, get away. I'm, like, Jesus never talked about Peter's sin. Jesus just filled Peter's boat with goodness. Yeah. And now Peter's on his knees. Yeah. Now Peter's a worshiper. Right. Now Peter's repenting. Now Peter has some self-awareness, all because of Jesus' goodness. Not because somebody was preaching to Peter about all his sin, how bad you are, and you better repent or turn or burn. He, he, that didn't cause him to fall on his knees. What caused him to fall on his knees was the goodness of God yeah. and how abundant Jesus' goodness was towards him. And then it says, for he, he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And then, they were, first they were, like, God wants to astonish you. Like, get ready. When you act on God's word, you're going to be astonished. Yeah. When you act on God's word, trust him. He's going to astonish you. Yeah. Like, we just acted on God's word. The Bible said, be fruitful and multiply. You know, your mother and I, we just took, took God at his word, be fruitful and multiply. And here you are. And, and there Gina is, and there Robert is, and I don't mean to make it about how great you guys are, but you are, and we're astonished. And, uh, you know, we are just in awe of what God can do when you just act on his word. Yeah. And Olivia came from that, and Roman, and I didn't want to leave them out. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it and uh, you, got, you get the point. And then... Uh, <laughs> And then all of our spiritual sons and daughters, many of are in this room and watching and online. Yeah. And, oh, we're just so thankful. So we're astonished. We're yeah. living in astonishment because we let down our net when Jesus said, start a church. Jesus said, I'm, you know, talk, to, talk about God's grace. Talk about my grace. Talk about, hey, tell people in 1992, 1993, tell people I'm not mad at them. I'm mad about them. Like I heard, that was the first thing I heard about for this church the voice of God, tell them, I'm not mad at them, I'm mad about them. Yeah. And that is astonishing to yeah, me. Yeah, 100%. So, uh, well, so what, I, what, I love about, what, I, what I love about this, this experience, this story, is that um, Peter, like, he, he had to put aside his, his insecurity or put aside his, you know, um, his pride. Yeah. Um, but what, what's, what's brilliant is that Jesus isn't going to make us do something that makes us fools of ourselves. Yeah. You know, like in the natural sense, Peter would think like, what are you talking about? Like, you don't know what That's you're, good. what you're talking about. So why would I do this? Because then I'm just going to embarrass myself. And that, that could, and, and that happens to all of us. We, we hear the Holy Spirit encourage us to do something and we think, I don't want to do that. That's weird. Or that's, that's a little out there. That's a little too Christian or whatever, you know, and maybe that limits us. Wow. Um, and maybe that would have limited Peter, but he decided, you know what, like, I'm going to trust, like how you said, nevertheless at your word, yeah, I'll do so. And then what happened was that he, like, if he didn't do that, like who would, who, who knows what he would have experienced, what he would have had to go through in order to get there. Like what, like he would have missed out on so much That's right. blessing, not just, you know, the resource of fish and, and bountiful amount, uh, but the, the experience of Jesus's presence and, and him realizing, wow, like I need to be around this. That's you exactly know? And right. And so, you know, that, that's just encouraging to me that like when I, when I feel an urge from, from the spirit or from, from Jesus or like in just in my own devotional time or speaking with God, like I got to listen and know that I'm not going to make a fool of myself by right. following. Like so Jesus, is, he's not looking to, hey, how much can you embarrass yourself in order to prove to me that you want to yeah. want to be used by me, nah, he's good. like, hey, just just step out, like just yeah. step step out in faith. I got you. Like trust me, you you don't know what's gonna come on the other side, but just listen, do this, and then you know, boom. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> so you know, so I love that. I do too. And and um, I think about you said something about what if what if Peter wouldn't have done that? Yeah. And 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 it's so amazing because up until this point, we know that. He was a fisherman. That was a very common thing. 
he was living a very ordinary life. But when he acted on the word Jesus told him, his his life became extraordinary. Yeah, that's he, a good it was, point. This was the first moment of an extraordinary life, and yeah. I want to encourage everybody: if the first moment of an extraordinary life always begins with hearing God's word and acting upon it, like when you act on God's word, then you are inviting extraordinary into your life. Mm. It's impossible to act on God's word and and something good not come from it. it Something good will always come from God's word because God's word is a seed. And when planted, it produces 30 fold, 60 fold and 100 fold. So I really want to encourage people. We, there's so much there's so much to dig out of this passage of scripture. But I want to make this point yeah. and then go on to what he said. And that is that just trust. We take care of the trusting. God takes care of the timing. Yeah, we take care of the trusting God takes care of making things, everything beautiful in its time. Yeah. And, um, and, and if you want to live an extraordinary life, it's really simple. Just act on God's word. Yeah. That will create a s extraordinary supernatural life. And then this is what happened. They were so astonished in verse, in verse uh, nine, P Peter falls to his knees in verse eight and it says, he and all that were with him were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so also were James and John, the, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. So they were all astonished. And then Jesus says something very interesting. Do not be afraid. From now on, you're going to catch men. From now on, you're going to be fishers of men. And I want you to, I want everybody to hear that this next word that Jesus gives to Peter is really simple, fear not. Yeah. But in the context that he says it, when he says fear not to Peter, he's saying it in the context of you just saw something amazing, but don't be, but don't be afraid. I don't want what you just saw to, 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 to scare you because what you're going to see is going to be even greater. Mm. That's why he's saying fear not. He said fear not. They just saw all these fish get caught and a cool, a really cool miracle. But Jesus says, I'm getting you ready for something so much better. Mm. And I want to encourage everybody, whenever you obey God in a little thing, God's getting you ready for something better. Yeah. God's getting you ready for something greater. And I want to encourage you to don't be afraid of, of the greatness that God can do in your life. Sometimes it's not that we're it's, it's sometimes we're afraid of the greatness, not that we can't believe it, but we're, we're fearful of what will happen. And we're fearful that, you know, it's just going to level off or it's going to be um, plateau. God's goodness in our lives never plateaus. Mm. Don't be afraid at what you saw because I'm going to do something even bigger. What if all of us could believe right now that no matter what's going on in our lives, God is up to something bigger. God is up to something greater. And God's miracle power always points to people. He, they saw a great catch of fish, but Jesus wanted them to see that was just a learning lesson so that you know the impact you're going to make in yeah. other people's lives. Yeah. No matter what's happened in your life, no matter what tests, trials, tragedies, disasters you've been through, God is going to use all of that so that you can impact people's lives yeah. because that's what life is all about making an impact. Yeah. And the way that that's landing on me personally is like whatever is in front of me, that seems like the next challenge or the next season of stepping up or whatever, like that can't, I can't let fear stop me from that because if I'm afraid of something smaller, there's no way right. that I can do more. So that that's kind of how, and maybe that's exactly what you said, and that's how exactly exactly how everyone else heard it. But that's how I'm hearing it right that's now. That's great. That's no, um, great. And even you know, even for our, if this is okay for everyone, even for our team right now in the room, like if you were to think of your guys' selves as like, oh, like you know, if I were to be asked to to get up in front of the camera and pray right now, oh, like would I be afraid? Like would I like would I be scared? But if you're scared of that. 
then like that's like how much more will we be afraid of more that God has for us? You know, does that make sense? Yeah. So that's that's how I'm applying it. Is like, man, if I'm if I'm leading worship and and God wants me to to step out and and do this or whatever, but I'm afraid of that. I'm like I can't be used at a higher capacity that He has that He's preparing me yes. for. And so that's why fear not, because the more that we just go with the flow and we're like, okay, I trust you. I'm with you use me then boom we we continue on the track of doing more and more and more for him so so good that's how that's landing on me and i just wanted that's to great. express that because i feel like that's awesome that is and that that's actually awesome not it really just is the hype no word. it is it's amazing and astonishing <laughs> you know these are the best things because that's exactly right god has something so much bigger for us than what we see right now. Yeah. He wants to do so much more than what you're experiencing right now in your life, not in a way that you have to struggle and strive for it, but you just have to like open up your heart and believe. The Bible says, uh, for eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it entered into the heart uh, of man all that God has prepared for those that love him. Like we haven't even begun to dream. Mm. We haven't even begun to imagine all that God has planned for those who love him. And the only reason we love him is because he first loved us. We love him because he first loved us. But think about that for a moment. No eye has seen it yet. Yeah, wow. No ear has heard it yet. No heart has even, has even been able to uh, entertain it yet. All the things that God has prepared mm. for those that love him. So whatever you have seen, the good that you have seen is nothing compared to what he has prepared for you. Yeah, awesome. And I can't wait. Like, God's not prepared. The Bible doesn't say God's preparing a, a, like a, a judgment for us. The Bible doesn't say he's preparing to chastise us when we get to heaven. Like, you should have done that. You should have done that. The Bible says he's preparing a place for us. Mm. The Bible says he's preparing a mansion for us. My, in my father's house are many mansions, he says, and I go now to prepare a place, to prepare a place for you. He's preparing feast. He's preparing a celebration. What did the father do when the son arrived, when his prodigal son arrived? He, he said, bring the best robe. He said, he said, kill the fatted calf. My son has arrived. When we get to heaven, it's not just about salvation. Yeah. It is about salvation first. But secondly, it's about when we get to heaven, when the fruit of our salvation is fully ripe and we go to heaven, the feast, the celebration that God has for us, it's not going to be a day of weeping. It's going to be a day of laughter and yeah. celebration. Yeah. And the Bible says the de the despondent is sad all the the, des the despondent is sad all the time, but the one who is cheerful of heart is always celebrating. There's always a feast for one who's happy in heart. Like we have to learn how to be happy in heart. And when we realize how much God has prepared for us though, because we love him, because he first loved us, it makes us happy. It makes you happy to think somebody's preparing something for you. The cre your creator, yeah. the creator of the universe is preparing something for you. Don't be afraid of, of getting to the next level and thinking, oh, new levels, new devils. Hey, <laughs> listen, the devils and the new levels are the same devils at the old levels. The devil is under <laughs> your foot, Come and on. you have authority over the devil, yeah, yeah. so there's nothing to be afraid of. The devil is just a little little squirt with a big megaphone. He makes it sound, a big microphone, he makes it sound like it's, he's really loud and really strong. The Bible actually says about the devil in Isaiah that one day when we... When we when our eyes are completely open to all the spiritual world that exists, we will look upon him who, who made man fear. We will look upon the devil who made man fear, and we will say, this is the one that made men fear? This Sheesh. was the one that shook the nations? Wow. The Bible literally says, we're going to say about the devil, this is the one this little thing is what wow. shook the nations. This is the thing that had me scared. This is the thing that, that I was running in terror of or afraid I would open the door to the devil. We have got to realize that the devil is not greater than you. Greater is he that is in you than Come he on. that's in the world. Yeah. Greater is he that's in you than he's in the world. So don't be afraid of greatness. I want to encourage people. God's call for your life yes. is a call to greatness. Yes. It's a call to higher. It's a call to deeper. It's a call to further. It's a call to greater impact. 
Don't be afraid of greatness. Don't be afraid because when you realize God wants to do great things in your life to impact others, you start welcoming it more. If you think it's just for yourself, you don't want to be selfish, you don't want to be greedy, that's good. But God wants to make your life great for the sake of others too yeah. so that you can inspire others and you can impact others yeah. with God's love, his word, his goodness, his grace. Don't be afraid of success. Some people don't think that they are afraid of it, but that is the re very reason they're not succeeding is because they're afraid of success. And I want to just break that off of you in the name of Jesus. I break the power of that fear of success, that fear of winning, that fear of, of impact, that fear of having the responsibility of, of carrying greatness. You're already carrying it, so you might as well go ahead and let it work its way out from within you into your daily life because God is at work in you to will and to work for his good pleasure. Sheesh. Amen. So <laughs> hope you receive that. <laughs> That's amazing. And like so, like so good because it's easy to forget that. It's yeah. easy to forget that our God is a big God so and big. has big things for us. Yeah. Like it's just we get into the mundane of life and, you know, it's just you know, everyday life and do our thing and, you know, like have my routine or whatever. But like there are people that need us. Like yeah. there are people that need the church. And and until the church has has, you know, covered the entire like face of the earth, God's going to need us. Yes, to, he is. to be used to do stuff, to do his works, to do to share his glory, to share his his presence. We're his body. Yeah, 100%. That's the only way that he's going to get it done is through his body. Yeah. The and head so, is in heaven. We're the body. Yeah, exactly. And that's why there's no reason to be afraid of, of having success, having impact, having influence, because that's all that's all designed for, for God to be glorified and for people to so come true. to him. That's so true. That's right. We can, even the smallest, even, even the youth, uh, even like in the word, um, you know, uh, don't let anyone despise you for your youth. Yeah. Like, even a small, even a, a, a young person can be used at a great, uh, at a great level, at a great capacity. That's God's vision. Amen. You know, it's not like only the few that I've chosen to be worthy. That's right. That's will right. Make an impact. It's, it's everybody. It is. It says, uh, your young men will see visions. Yeah. That's God speaking about the young. And he said, and then your old men will dream dreams. And God's speaking about the old. And then he says on your, on your men and women, on your, on your male servants and your female servants. God is all about diversity and inclusion and something's great. God wants to do something great in everybody's life. And um, I really think like Jabez prayed in First Chronicles 4, he said he was born in pain, his name meant pain, and he said, Lord, bless me indeed, enlarge my territory. Now, you guys know that this is something we've prayed for years, like enlarge our territory. And, and the way I interpret that, the way I pray for that is, Lord, enlarge my impact. Let yeah. me make more of a difference in people's yeah. lives. I don't, I don't want, I don't need to be famous. I don't need to be known. I just want to make impact. Yeah. I want to, I want my life to have been felt by this world. Yeah. I want this world to feel my life. I want God to use my life to impact this world in a way that impacts it and changes it. And I want every person in the sound of my voice to believe for the same thing for you. Yeah. And, it, and it's because it says, and God granted his request. Come on. God granted, Jabez said, enlarge me, bless me, enlarge me, that your hand would be upon me, that, that I would not cause pain. And, and it says, and God granted his request. And he, if he grants Jabez's request, he'll grant mine. He'll grant yours. He'll grant everybody who asks him. Like, why don't we just pray right now and right where you are? Because pain in the Bible is also defined. One of the definitions for the word pain is also the word limits, mm. limited. So, when you, so the pain that you've had in your life is meant by the enemy to limit you. The pain that you experience is meant to limit you and the limitations in your life are meant to bring you pain. Not meant by God, but meant the devil takes your pain and he wants you to be confined by yeah, it yeah. and defined by it. And the devil takes what you think are limitations and he gets you to be in pain over your limitations. But God, on the other hand, he says, rip the roof off, believe me for more, 
Open your eyes, ask big, dream big. I'll do exceeding abundantly above and beyond all that you can ask or think. God's like, take the, t- put the pedal to the metal and believe God can do above and beyond and yeah. more and more and more for impact. Yeah. And you gotta be willing to, to say, God, use me, bless me indeed. So let's, I wanna pray this. I don't know how we got here, but we're here. Come on. And we're not gonna be limited anymore by our yeah. past. Yep. We're not limited by COVID. We're not limited by pandemics. Our church is making a greater impact. Yeah. That, that's why people said, well, why, don't, why aren't you in a hurry to fight the government? We did that. We did that. We're done with that. We're, not, we're praying for the government now. We're not fighting it. And we're believing and we're trusting and we're going to be used by God right where we are. We're going to have church and glorify God in the temple and from house to house. God's been wanting to get in your house. God's been wanting to get in your yeah. life. God's been wanting to get in your family yeah. for years and years. God's been wanting to get deeper into me and deeper into my awareness of how church should be arms and feet, not uh, not doors that close yeah. people in or, or are meant to just gather people. We're meant to gather people to train them for training for raining and then <laughs> send them. Come on. Mm, God knows what I was supposed to wear today for you. <laughs> We are training for rain in people. And so I want you to pray this with me. If you're ready to take the limits off and if you're ready to be not, be not afraid for you're going to be catching men. Don't be afraid of that little miracle. Don't be worried about that. Don't let that. I'm going to astonish you with something even greater than that. You think that was good. Wait till you see the next act. That's what God is saying to us. So come on, everybody pray this out loud right where you are. Just say, Lord, bless me indeed. Bless me indeed. The blessing is already paid for the blessing is already paid through, the for. through the blood of Jesus. So I activate that blessing so activate that with, my words. with my words. Bless me indeed. Bless me indeed. Enlarge, my territory. Enlarge my territory. Increase my impact. Increase my impact. You, said to believe you, for increase. you said to believe you for increase. So I'm asking you, so I'm asking for, you increase. for increase. Increase my health. Increase my, health. Increase my, blessing. Increase my blessing. Increase my impact. Increase my, impact. Increase my wisdom. Increase my wisdom. Increase my love. Increase my love. I receive increase. I receive increase. And I release it in my life. And I release it in my life. Lord, thank you. Your hand is upon me. Thank you that your hand is upon me. I'm asking for your anointing. I'm asking for your anointing. To be renewed in my life. To be renewed in my life. A fresh oil. A fresh oil. Of anointing. Of anointing. To fulfill your purpose. To fulfill your purpose. For my life. For my life. And that you will use me. And that you will use me. To bring healing, not pain. To bring healing and not pain. I remove the limits. I remove the limits. I'm not defined. I'm not, I'm, not I'm not confined to my past, to my, past, to my, mistakes, my mistakes, to my failures, to my, failures, to my, shortcomings. To my shortcomings. I believe in a bigger God than that, I believe in a, bigger God a, than limitless, that. God. a limitless God. That's who you are. That's who you are. And what you have planned for me what you have planned for is me. greater than I could have ever imagined. It's greater than I could have ever imagined. And I ask for it, I ask for it and I receive it. I receive it. Just as you granted Jabez's request, just as you granted Jabez's request, you grant mine as well. You gr- you grant mine as well. Amen. Amen. That's Amen. it. That's it. You have just begun such a miracle journey of it's going to be adventure. Come on. It's going to be wild. It's going to be fun. It's going to be challenging, but it's going to be a stretch of your faith. But listen, God has already prepared you for what the greatness that He has for you. So just walk day by day. Just keep walking through the valley of the shadow. Wherever you are, just keep walking. Just keep walking. Just keep moving forward. Just take a step forward. Just move forward a little yeah. at a time and you will get there if you just take it by faith and know that God's already been to your future and he's bringing you into it. He's already been there and came back to get you to bring you into it. <laughs> awesome. That's what God's doing. Now, maybe you're watching right now and you've never received Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. Why not make today your the day that you become a part of the family of God. This Christianity is a family. It's not a religion. It's a family. Did you hear me? It's not a religion. It's a family. Yeah, it's good. I want you to come into the family. Like if you've never been sure you're saved, never been sure you're going to heaven when you die, come into the family. Pray this prayer right now after me. Just say, Heavenly Father, I invite Jesus Christ. Just pray that I invite Jesus Christ into my life as my Savior and Lord. I believe Jesus died for my sins and rose from the dead. From this moment forward, I'm a child of God. Now, if you prayed that prayer to receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, guess what? 
you're in the family now. You are in the family. Welcome home. There's a little link on the screen that you'll find that you can get our book, The Power of a New Life, and you can download it anywhere in the world. And it's the next steps of this great journey that you just started. And so, uh, so great. we're leaders for life. We're yep. called to lead as servants. And I'm thankful for you hosting this, Joseph. <laughs> no, thank thank you. you. And uh, thank great you. job. Oh, no, thanks. I can't wait till Sunday. I know. We, we are excited for Sunday. And guys, Easter is coming around the corner. Yeah. We are going to be gathering in the house. So make sure you're reserving your spot. And we got, we've got a kids program as well. So check that out. We're really excited celebrating Jesus. Nothing better. We love you guys, and we will see you this love Sunday. You. Peace. <laughs>